So uh, this is our D4 descender. Um, we've developed this over the last 18 to 24 months uh, to be a work rescue descender. Um, and it is rated for two people rescue, so it's got a working wall limit of 240 kilos on that. Do you need any additional friction with that? No, you don't. Um, this, the descender has been designed so that uh, you don't need any additional friction. Um, the leverage in the handle is enough so you can control a descent even with two people. So I'll show you how it goes onto the rope first of all. Uh, you've got to push down the safety button and that opens the device up. You can see the rope path is really simple. Um, you've got an anchor icon there on the cam so you can see that the rope, the rope just feeds onto there really nice and easily. And the rope you can use on this is 10.5 to 11.5 curve mantle rope. So you can see it works like that. And the side plates just click in like that. And there's a, there's a couple of benefits with this. You've, so you've got the, the push button and what that does is obviously it gives you a, 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 like a double action safety. But it also gives you an audible indicator of when that clicks through, it clicks into place. The other thing about this is as well is like, like other descenders have got uh, like plastic gates on them. So, uh, and, and they can break, and that effectively renders the device uh, unusable. So what we decided to do was, A, we made it without uh, any sort of plastic gate, any hinged gate on it. But also you can see there, look, you've got a scoop. And what that does is that go, always goes underneath the carabiner and pushes it up into place. And it just helps to keep the, the carabiner in place rather than it going between the two side plates. That causes a lot of problems with descenders often. So. So you can see now, uh, once the once the plate's been locked into place, okay, and you actually put a bit of load on that, it's pretty much impossible to open the side plates anyway, because you have not only is it hard to push the button, but also if the plate did pivot, you've got a little again a little scoop in the in the the plate there, which positions the carabiner so the plate can't open. Yeah, so it's just a little safety safety factor. Okay, um, the, the couple of main things that make this different from any other descender is um, the operation of the material. So we'll look at the operation first. This handle, it's an aluminium handle, so there's no plastic. All right, and what the handle does is rotate all the way around. Yeah, so you don't do any of this. It goes all the way around. And you can hear it clicking. So you've got a couple of really important positions with that. You've got the, the working position, which is here, which allows you to descend. And if you let go, it just automatically stops. But it also allows you to, if you're descending down and you go into panic, all right, so that's, it's, it's pretty, pretty easy to put it into panic. And I'll explain about the sensitivity of that later on. But you can see now that position, that handle position is in a parking position. All right, so you can either put it, you can go into parking from the panic brake like that, or if you're descending down, so like a work position, like a window or whatever it is you're trying to clean or inspect, you can actually push the handle all the way back around to that position, and that means you're, in, you're, you're parked. And effectively, that's where in some places, uh, with some descenders, you would soft lock them. Mm -hmm. And you don't really need to with this one. It, it, it's best practice, so you can if you want to, but you don't really need to. Because if you put the handle into that parked position, and you have a weight on the carabiner, the handle can't go that way. Okay, so if you're swinging around and you accidentally knock something, you can't move the handle that way. And if you move it that way, it goes all the way around through neutral to click, and then you're in your work position again. Yeah. Hmm. The other things with this is, uh, you'll see that the cam, okay, you can actually push down on the cam to get it to feed the rope through. Right, and that's, that's quite a useful feature, not just for like at the bottom of the descent when you're trying to, when you've got no load on the device, you're just trying to get the, the, the handle through to pay some rope through, you can just do that. But also you could use it for work positioning. So if you're on like a sloping roof or something like that, you can instead of trying to feather the handle to get to the position you want, you can just do that with it and work down the roof. Yeah. Because obviously, if you if you were then to fall or apply a load to that, it just pulls it out, it pulls it away from your thumb. So you can't push that down and apply a load to that at the same time. So again, mm -hmm. it's a safety feature. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you'll see as well that I'm pulling the rope through. Again, that cam has been designed for minimal friction. So when you're pulling through, when you're either ascending or you're creating a Z rig system out of that, you've got minimal friction there, so it's really easy to ascend with it or to create a little two to one mechanical uh, progress capture device. The other way this can be used as well, not just as a, as a work rescue descender, but you can also use it as a belay device. So if you want to, you can hook that onto an anchor point like that, and you can, you can uh, a, a descend um, a, a stretcher or a two-person load or anything like that as well. You get full control of that as well. In terms of materials, so we've got a uh, four millimeter aluminium plate, uh, which is thicker than most other descenders that are used at the moment, which makes that pretty robust. You've got a solid stainless steel cam, um, and, and as, as far as we've been aware so far in all the evaluation processes we've done, we haven't really seen those wear out. So we've seen very little wear on this, very little wear on this, and very little wear normally where you get it over here. Yeah. The other thing you can do as well if you want to, a lot of people, as we'll see later on, a lot of people will, will descend like that, so they'll have the right hand on the control rope. And again, that's, that's sort of normal practice, certainly with um, uh, rope access and some rescue work. You don't have to do that with this one. So we'll, 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 you'll see later on in the demonstration, you can actually just run the thing with, with, you don't have to touch this rope at all if you don't want to. If you want, what we found on a, uh, we did a, a tower demonstration about 120 metres and what we found was that when there's a lot of rope below you, it's actually sometimes a little harder to get started when the rope's over there, so you could feed the rope over the nose and it makes it a little easier to get the rope started. So a little bit less friction if you push it through the rope, uh, sorry, across the nose.